National Airlines Flight 102 National Airlines Flight 102 was a cargo flight using a Boeing 747-400 BCF, a modified freighter designed to carry heavy military equipment. On April 29, 2013, it was transporting five armored vehicles from Camp Bastion in Afghanistan to Dubai. With a stop at Bagram Airfield for refueling, the flight was part of the U.S. military's withdrawal operations. Shortly after taking off from Bagram, things went terribly wrong. Witnesses saw the plane climb steeply before its nose suddenly pitched up uncontrollably. It stalled midair, then crashed back down inside the airfield, erupting into flames. Tragically, all seven crew members on board lost their lives. The crash was caught on video and quickly spread across the internet, shocking both the aviation and defense communities. An investigation by the National Transportation Safety Board found that the military vehicles inside the plane hadn't been properly secured. During takeoff, at least one of them broke loose and slid backwards, damaging the aircraft's hydraulic systems and flight controls. This left the pilots unable to stabilize or control the plane. The NTSB blamed the crash on poor cargo restraints and pointed out safety failures by both the airline and the FAA. China Airlines Flight 611 China Airlines Flight 611 was a Boeing 747-209B, a big, reliable plane that had been flying for over 20 years. It had handled countless flights and was a key part of the airline's fleet. On May 25, 2002, it was making a routine trip from Taipei to Hong Kong, carrying 206 passengers and 19 crew members. Just a simple, everyday flight, nothing out of the ordinary. The plane took off as usual and climbed to 35,000 feet. Everything seemed fine, but about 20 minutes in, it just vanished from radar. No distress call, no warning, just gone. Air traffic control had just cleared it to cruise at its altitude, and then, out of nowhere, it broke apart mid-air. Fishermen in the area reported seeing a fireball in the sky, followed by wreckage falling into the sea. The breakup was so sudden that the pilots never had a chance to react. Tragically, no one survived. When investigators recovered the flight recorders from the ocean floor, they uncovered something shocking. This disaster had been waiting to happen for over two decades. Back in 1980, this same plane had suffered a tail strike. Basically, its rear end hit the runway too hard during landing. It was repaired, but not in the right way. Instead of completely replacing the damaged section, the airline just patched it up with a metal plate. It worked for a while, but over 22 years and thousands of flights, tiny cracks started forming underneath that patch. Every time the plane took off and landed, those cracks got worse. And on that tragic day in 2002, they finally reached their breaking point. The back of the plane tore apart mid-flight, causing the entire aircraft to disintegrate in seconds. Singapore Airlines Flight 006 Singapore Airlines Flight 006 was a Boeing 747-412, a large aircraft known for its special tropical livery, a colorful design celebrating the airline's service. On October 31, 2000, it was scheduled to fly from Singapore to Los Angeles with a stop in Taipei. There were 159 passengers and 20 crew members on board, making a total of 179 people. When the plane arrived in Taipei, the weather was bad due to Typhoon Zhang Sein. Heavy rain and strong winds made it difficult to see clearly, but the crew still prepared for takeoff. Air traffic control cleared Flight 006 to taxi to runway 05L but the pilots mistakenly lined up on runway 05R instead, a runway that was closed for construction. There were construction vehicles and barriers on the runway, but in the poor visibility, the crew didn't notice the mistake. The airport also didn't have a ground radar technology that could have warned air traffic controllers. Unaware they were on the wrong runway, the pilots pushed the throttle and started speeding down runway 05R. Seconds later, disaster struck. The plane crashed into construction equipment, including excavators and concrete barriers. The impact tore the plane apart, breaking off the engines and landing gear. A massive fire erupted from the fuel tanks quickly spreading. Emergency crews arrived fast, but the damage was already severe. Sadly, 83 people, including four crew members, lost their lives, mostly in the middle section, which took the hardest hit. The other 96 survived, though many were badly injured. Investigators found that the crash was due to pilot error. The crew mistakenly took off from their wrong runway without double-checking their position. Poor visibility and unclear signs made things worse. And without proper ground radar, air traffic control didn't catch the mistake in time. Korean Air Cargo Flight 8509 Korean Air Cargo Flight 8509 was a Boeing 747-2B5F, a large cargo plane that had been in service since 1980. By the end of 1999, it had completed over 15,000 flights and logged more than 83,000 hours in the air. On December 22, 1999, 
It was scheduled to fly from London Stansted Airport to Milan Malpensa Airport in Italy as part of a longer journey that started in Seoul, South Korea, with stops in Tashkent and London. There were four crew members on board, the captain, first officer, flight engineer, and a maintenance technician. Before leaving Tashkent, the plane had a problem with one of its navigation systems, which caused incorrect readings on the captain's main flight display. To work around this, the crew switched the systems to use a backup unit, allowing them to reach London without further issues. Once at Stansted, maintenance crews tried to fix the problem, but without proper repair manual or replacement parts, they could only do a temporary fix by adjusting a damaged connector. The system passed a self-test, so the faulty unit was left active. The plane took off from Stansted in the evening, climbing into the night sky. As it passed 400 feet and entered cloud cover, the captain started a left turn as per the departure procedure. However, because of the malfunctioning system, his display didn't show that the plane was tilting too far. The first officer's instruments were working fine, but he didn't take control or question the captain. The flight engineer tried to warn him, saying, bank is not working, and bank, bank, but got no response. The plane kept tilting left until it was too late. Less than a minute after takeoff, the left wing hit the ground, and the plane crashed into a forest near Great Hallenbury. The impact was so severe that all four crew members died instantly. Investigators found that a faulty navigation system misled the captain into thinking the plane was level when it wasn't. Maintenance issues at Stansted meant the problem wasn't fully fixed. On top of that, poor communication in the cockpit made things worse. The first officer didn't step in, and the flight's engineer's warnings were ignored. TWA Flight 800 TWA Flight 800 was a Boeing 747-131, a large passenger aircraft known for its long-range capabilities. On July 17, 1996, it was scheduled to fly from New York's JFK Airport to Rome with a stop in Paris. There were 230 people on board, 212 passengers and 18 crew members. The plane took off from JFK and climbed smoothly. About 12 minutes later, when it reached 13,700 feet over the Atlantic Ocean near East Moriches, New York, disaster struck. The aircraft suddenly broke apart in midair. People on the ground saw a bright explosion, followed by debris falling into the ocean. Wreckage was scattered across a wide area, and tragically, everyone on board lost their lives. The National Transportation Safety Board launched one of the most complex and expensive investigations in aviation history. After four years of detailed analysis, they determined that the cause of the accident was an explosion in the center wing fuel tank. The explosion happened because of flammable fuel slash air mixture inside the tank. While they couldn't pinpoint the exact ignition source, Investigators believe that a short circuit outside the fuel tank caused an electrical surge, which then traveled through the wiring of the fuel quantity indication system. This surge likely triggered the explosion, leading to the plane's in-flight breakup. Japan Airlines Flight 123 Japan Airlines Flight 123 was a Boeing 747-SR46, designed for short domestic routes with more seats than usual. On August 12, 1985, it was flying a routine trip from Tokyo's Haneda Airport to Osaka's Itami Airport carrying 524 people, 509 passengers, and 15 crew members. About 12 minutes after takeoff, as the plane reached 24,000 feet over Sagami Bay, something went terribly wrong. A loud explosion ripped through the back of the aircraft. The rear pressure bulkhead had ruptured, causing a rapid loss of air pressure. This also tore off the vertical stabilizer, the tail fin, and damaged all four hydraulic systems, making the plane nearly impossible to control. The pilots did everything they could, using engine power to steer, but the aircraft kept swaying and losing stability. For 32 minutes, they fought to keep it in the air. But in the end, the plane crashed into Mount Takamagahara in Ganma Prefecture. Out of 524 people on board, only four survived. The investigation found that the cause of the accident was traced back to a mistake made seven years earlier. In 1978, the same aircraft had suffered a tail strike during landing, which damaged the rear pressure bulkhead. Boeing had it repaired, but they didn't follow the correct procedure. Instead of using one solid reinforcement plate with three rows of rivets, they used two smaller plates. This weakened the bulkhead, making it more likely to crack over time. After years of repeated pressurization cycles, the bulkhead finally gave way, leading to the decompression and loss of control that caused the crash. Tenerife Airport Disaster The Tenerife Airport Disaster is the deadliest accident in aviation history, caused by a tragic runway collision between two Boeing 747 jumbo jets. On March 27, 1977, KLM Flight 5805 and Pan Am Flight 1736 were both supposed to land at Gran Canaria Airport, but a terrorist bombing forced them to divert to Los Rodeos Airport. This small airport wasn't designed to handle so many large planes at once, 
leading to overcrowding. KLM's aircraft was a Boeing 747-206B, a long-haul plane known for its advanced technology at the time. Pan Am's plane, a Boeing 747-121, was a symbol of luxury air travel and global connectivity. Both flights carried a mix of vacationers and business travelers eager to reach their final destinations. The accident happened in thick fog, making it hard to see anything on the ground. Since the main taxiway was full of parked planes, departing aircraft had to taxi on the active runway. The KLM plane taxied to the end of the runway, turned around, and got ready to take off. The Pan Am plane was supposed to turn onto a side taxiway, but in the thick fog, the crew missed the exit and kept going down the runway. Thinking the runway was clear, the KLM captain started to take off without final clearance. As the plane sped up, the crew suddenly saw the Pan Am jet right in front of them. The KLM pilots tried to pull up, and the Pan Am crew desperately tried to turn, but it was too late. The KLM's engines and landing gear tore into the Pan Am's fuselage. The KLM briefly lifted off before crashing back down and bursting into flames. The Pan Am was also engulfed in fire. A total of 583 people died, with only 61 survivors, all from the Pan Am flight. Investigators found that the KLM captain took off without proper clearance, Poor radio communication, the lack of ground radar, and misunderstandings between pilots and air traffic control all played a role. United Airlines Flight 811 United Airlines Flight 811 was a Boeing 747-122, a large aircraft designed for long-distance travel. On February 24, 1989, it was scheduled to fly from Los Angeles to Sydney, with stops in Honolulu and Auckland. There were 337 passengers and 18 crew members on board making a total of 355 people. The first part of the journey from Los Angeles to Honolulu went smoothly. The plane took off from Honolulu just after midnight. But 16 minutes into the flight, while climbing past 22,000 feet, disaster struck. The forward cargo door on the right side suddenly blew off, causing a massive hole in the side of the aircraft. The violent decompression tore part of the cabin floor away, and tragically, nine passengers were sucked out of the plane. Flying debris also damaged two of the engines, and one of them caught fire. Despite the severe damage, the pilots managed to turn the plane around and head back to Honolulu. They quickly descended to a lower altitude and worked to control the situation. The fire in the damaged engine was put out, and after a tense 22 minutes, they made a successful emergency landing in Honolulu. While most people on board survived, nine passengers lost their lives and several others were injured. Investigators from the National Transportation Safety Board looked into what caused the accident. They found that the cargo door's locking system had failed because of an electrical problem. A short circuit had caused the door latches to unlock during the flight, even though they were supposed to stay securely locked. The investigation revealed flaws in the cargo door's design, which led to changes in how the doors were built and maintained to prevent future accidents. MK Airlines Flight 1602 MK Airlines Flight 1602 was a Boeing 747 cargo plane built in 1980. On October 14, 2004, it was scheduled to fly from Halifax, Canada to Zaragoza, Spain. Earlier, it had taken off from Bradley International Airport in Connecticut, carrying lawn tractors and landed in Halifax in the early morning to load about 117,000 pounds of lobster and fish. The crew included seven people. The captain, first officer, first engineer, relief captain, relief flight engineer, ground engineer, and loadmaster. Five of them were from Zimbabwe, while the captain and ground engineer were from South Africa. Just before sunrise, the plane taxied to runway 24 for takeoff. As it sped down the runway, the pilots tried to lift off at about 150 miles per hour, but the plane didn't take off as expected. They pulled back on the controls to increase the pitch. This caused the tail to hit the runway nearly one and a half miles down. With very little runway left, they increased the thrust, but the aircraft still struggled to get off the ground. It barely lifted off just past the end of the runway, but struck an antenna structure about 1,000 feet beyond. The impact tore off the tail, and the plane crashed into the ground, bursting into flames. Sadly, all seven crew members lost their lives. Investigators from the Transportation Safety Board of Canada found that the crew had used incorrect takeoff speeds and thrust settings. Instead of recalculating for the plane's actual weight of 780,000 pounds after loading cargo in Halifax, they reused data from their previous takeoff in Connecticut, which was based on a much lighter weight of 530,000 pounds. This mistake meant the plane didn't have enough power to take off properly. The investigation also found that the crew had been working for over 24 hours straight, which likely made them extremely tired and more prone to errors. 